Welcome back to the Mega Man Like mini series. Today we're going to be setting up our player's life bar and we're going to be using a different method than what I have used in previous videos. I think this is a more advanced method. It was introduced by Jesse in one of his videos and so I decided to implement this for the player object for this series. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the resource tab. This is usually where you will right click, add an image, add your image file there. But I did want to show that in the animations tab, you can actually add an animation. And I'm going to name this the HUD life. And then when you go to register here, you can actually click new. And it will pop up as well to import an image. So I can import the HP here. Now one thing is, is that we'll have to partition it from here. So I know that the vertical is 31 because it starts with zero health and it goes all the way up to 30. I'm trying to stick with that Mega Man like. Uh, little uh, segments. So then we can click OK and it's going to add it. It's going to add it just fine. And then if we go to the resource tab, we'll see that it did in fact add the resource. So that is a handy way if you're just wanting to cut directly to the animations. All right, so I'm going to delete detections. We don't need them for the HUD. And I'm going to center it. Some animations for the HUD particularly, I do like upper left because you can go when you're placing it in the scene, you can go from zero and you can go 10 this way and 10 this way and it will it will give a more even placement. But for this case, I'm just going to center it. And then I am going to just make sure that the center is as close to the center as possible just in case I want to rotate it. I don't think we will, but just in case. And that way it's all set up. So I can copy paste this image around and it's not going to, it's it's going to be exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to call this one the life because I could technically add a bunch of stuff. I could add the weapon energies and stuff like that. Uh, this is going to be single. This is going to be the only one. And now here we get to the method that we're going to use. Okay. So before in um, some of my other videos, I've had it where you have a processing and then you have a direction. And this one would be, for instance, let's say full health. And then you would have another one. And this one would be the next health and then in the object you would change it from this direction to this direction when when there's hp that's being lost so we're going to actually bypass that whole process and we're just going to stick with the animation frame to let us know where the player's life is all right and so and how we're going to do that is let's just create this object real quick so we're going to add an object we're going to go to hud life automatically names it if you select the animation take away all these things and then you can click not affect by gravity you can also go to moving and jumping and you can set the gravity to zero and then that will make every action not have gravity as well all right so in every object's variable we have a variable called animation frame and by default, it's just set to negative one. And that means that your animation is playing according to how you have it set up. We can see that if you do it negative two, which I've talked about in other videos, then it will pause the frame wherever it's at. It's going to pause the animation. No animation will play. Now you can also use this to actually set the animation. So for instance, if we said animation frame is equal to zero, then it is going to literally play the first frame of the animation and it's going to hold it there. So since we know that animation frame zero will equal animation, this first frame, we can say that that it would be the same as if the player's life was equal to zero. Okay. So I hope this is making sense. Now, one thing to note that this only works if your frame is set to one. If your frame was set to two, then it would be a little bit out of balance. But if you set it equal to one here, and this will make sense, it will all come full circle, then it's literally a one-to-one -one representation of the player's HP. Okay, so we know that animation frame zero is going to be this one, which is zero life, which works, and copy-paste it. So this one is going to be animation frame one, and it's going to be with one life. So you can see this very convenient system that we can make up here. So I'm just going to copy paste and just add them. 
So this is as simple as copy pasting and then clicking the next one up. All right, so I should have 31 frames here. And if I just scroll down real quick, I can see that it fills up one at a time. All right, and again, this is animation frame technically zero, and then it takes one frame to get to this one. So this is animation frame one, which is one life. This would be animation frame two, which is two life. If you come from like a coding background, the zero will make a lot of sense because arrays and stuff all start with zero. So, so it makes sense that the first frame is technically zero. But just if you're not comfortable with coding, just realize that the first frame is if you're equal to zero. Okay, so now that we have the life set up, we can actually go to the object and create the logic. And we're gonna see how easy this is. So we go to objects. All right, so we can go to action programs. And the first node, this is gonna be uh, changing throughout this video, but the first node we're gonna put on here is processing. Now you'll find this is very similar to the other life systems that I've had where we have a processing node and it takes over motion. And that is because you do need a way to hold, retain the animation frame that you're on. And so the only other thing that we need, that we actually need to get this to work, is we need a change HP action. This is where we're gonna change the HP. And we don't want take over motion. This is where we actually want to set the motion that is then taken over in processing. All right, so we're going to change the HP and how we're going to do that is we're going to change this object's animation frame variable to equal the player's current HP. And so then that is going to give us the frame to show because remember we set up in the animations, we set up the segments to represent an actual HP value. And we did it accurately where this one is zero, this one is one, this one is two, and so on. So now if animation, if the player's HP is two, animation frame is going to equal two. So that, that's how we're going to do this. Now we want to go back to processing and we want to do that unconditionally. So we want to change it and then run right back into processing. And then we want to detect for a way in to change the HP. And that is simply going to be if this animations frame uh, variable does not equal, this little symbol is does not equal for those that are wondering, the player's HP. So really simple check. If the animation frame does not equal the HP, then that means that the player has either lost HP or gained HP. Then that will ring true. It will go into change HP, uh, HP. it will re-equalize to the correct animation frame and then it will go right back into processing and then if life is lost or gained again it will jump right back in there so you can see just how simple this is to set up so from here we can actually start to test this we can go to scene and we can add it i'm going to add it in the above layer just for the time being we will eventually uh, get a menu layer going for this so it's in the above. I'm going to change it to change HP just so I can see it while I place it. And I'll just place it right here. And then I'll change it back to object default action. So you know this action on appearance is, is pretty handy when you have an invisible starting action, but you want to see where to place it in the end. It's also handy for a lot of things actually. Okay, and so then with this, we can go to the player and we can uh, see in our basic settings that the max HP is 30. So let's just say that we are going to start the player with half HP. And when we play test, we will see that it started indeed with half HP. And now we can test this by going to the, the player object here and adding, this is the F1 debug menu for those that are wondering. I went to uh, D, F1 debug object data. This popped up. And if you click details, it goes to this screen where you can manipulate variables and all these things. So here's the HP and here's the HP. So if I add, you'll see that the animation frame changed and we can go down to HUD life here and see how fast it processes. So if I press up again, you can see it just, it blipped into change HP and then went right back to processing. 
and then we can go down. And the cool thing about using the HP is HP is locked minimum zero and it is locked max HP with whatever the max HP is. So really cool system, really easy system to get your, your HUD up there. And by the way, this system will work with hearts or any kind of life system. This is probably the new go-to method for it. So definitely props to Jesse for, for uh, figuring this one out. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is add some spice and just to show you how to get started at least, to add some uh, juice or whatever they call it, some effects when the HUD is losing life or gaining life. All right, and this is just gonna be very simple. We're gonna go into the change HP here and we're going to add an apply filter effect on the object. And we're just gonna make it flash white whenever you whenever the life changes. And we're just gonna have it flash just white like this. And you could even lower the opacity if you want. And then in the processing here, we're going to have a 0.1 weight. And then we're going to then delete the filter effect. And you could click all if you have multiple, but we just have the apply suck to color. And we'll just do by zero. So now what's going to happen is it's going to apply a filter effect as well now. And then when it goes back into the processing after 0.1 seconds, it's going to delete it. And so now we can get an effect like this. You can see that it started white and we can change that here, but you can see that every time now you, you get hit and you're not going to like constantly be gaining life unless, unless you have a way to, to get it. This is more just ideas to throw out there. It's not a set thing, but. In this game, particularly, if you get hit, you're gonna lose a chunk. So you're gonna lose 15 life, let's say. So I went from 23 and then I went to 15. It's gonna flash white and then you're gonna you're gonna be there. So in this case, it, it looks pretty good. I might even change the opacity to 250. See how that looks real quick. And 0.1 might be a little too long here, but we'll see. So let's say that I lost to 10 life. Boom, something like that. Actually, the opacity looked good. All right. So the only other thing that I will show here, and again, I, I, I did this, added this little effect here so that we could get into uh, another thing that I would like to add is I usually like to have a setup action and this just gives you freedom to uh, do a bunch of things. Like for instance, I deleted the apply filter effect. And so that way, when you're loading into the level the first time, it won't flash but then every other time you get hit, it will flash or something like that. And you can, th and so to make this the default, right click and set as the default action. And then we'll just add an unconditional link into processing. And so you can run anything that you wanted in this setup type action. And you'll note that I do have the life in this. And then I also have the animation frame setting to the player's HP right away. So it's going to update properly right away. And then it's going to unconditionally go into processing. It doesn't matter that it's deleting the filter, even though I didn't add it, that that's not, it's not going to uh, be bad for anything. But then every, every other time I get hit, it will lose opacity. And so you can see that boom, I start up and there's no white. You can see that this one does start with white. So we could change that if we needed to. But then if I did lose life or gain life, it would do that, that flash. And so a lot of that's personal preference, but I did want to point out that you could add a sound effect right here or some other stuff if you wanted as well. And so that is it for this advanced life bar system. Again, hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, visit us on the Steam Forums Discord. We'll get you figured out. So anyway, with that said, we'll see you at the next video.